Hey friends, in this video, we have a really special resource that we want to share with you to enrich your friendship with God. And it is a key and a tool and a place of connection that we have used as a community for years to build our friendship with God. And it's called Journaling the Voice of the Lord. From our very first summer camp that we hosted here on the land 23 years ago, we used this tool to help high school kids connect with the heart of God. And it's a tool that has carried over into our discipleship programs. And it is a place of connection between our hearts and the Lord's heart. And in this video, we are gonna walk you through what this tool is and lead you into a prompt to go just beyond information into a beautiful place of intimate encounter with the Lord and His voice over your life. This video is taken from our Engaging Cultivate online workshops. This, um, this tool of journaling the voice of the Lord is a foundation for each of the courses that we have online. And it also is a tool that we use over and over in our books, Cultivate. Uh, we have six beautiful devotional books that end with prompts and most of the articles. And in many of the articles, we're going to charge you and empower you to journal the voice of the Lord. And so what you're gonna hear today will help you engage the books cultivate and also will give you a taste of what we have on our online platform called Engaging Cultivate. Uh, we have poured our hearts into these three online workshops that we've built over the last few years. The first one was um, the honesty tool that we released in 2020. And the honesty tool is an incredible tool that honestly has saved me and Melissa's marriage. Uh, it has changed the way we parent and lead this community. It's a tool that we use in all of our schools. And it is a very practical and powerful tool to process your life with God, process very practical moments and hear the Lord's voice and walk out wholeness with Him through life. The second online workshop we released is called Engaging Sound. And it is a beautiful online workshop to learn how to engage God's heart through instrumental music. This is paired with our Cajus Birds album, Generosity. And our newest online workshop is Visual Journaling. And this is led by our uh, chief creative director and art teacher here at A Place for the Heart, Justina Stevens. And she leads you through the process of visual journaling, moving beyond words in your journal and using paint, using color, using drawing to document your life with God and commune with God in your journal. This is an incredible resource. You can find all these at engagingcultivate.com. And I just pray as you watch this video that you will encounter the Lord in a fresh way and you will hear His voice over your life speaking, beloved. Hey friends, welcome to this special session of Engaging Cultivate. We are gonna take this whole session and talk about one of my favorite spiritual practices, journaling the voice of the Lord. Um, beside me, I have a stack of journals. This is just some of my journals from the last 22 years of practicing this. Um, I'll never forget, it was a summer uh, in the mountains of North Carolina, and my dad uh, taught a bunch of young kids at a summer camp how to journal God's voice. And from that summer, I have been collecting these journals. And journaling the Lord's voice isn't just me writing down my thoughts. It's going that next step of, by faith, listening to the still small voice of God and putting it down pen into paper so you can have it the rest of your life. And one thing that's very special to me is one day, my kids are gonna inherit these journals. Uh, and maybe even my grandkids are going to read this. And when they open these books and read them, they are going to read my history with God. They're gonna see my story with God. Journaling the Lord's voice is that, give us today our daily bread, God, moments. Um, and this is years and years and years of my daily bread with God that has fed me and sustained me along my journey. 
Uh, my dad is the founder of this ministry, and uh, we call him the original Cageless Bird. And one of the core values of his life has been that God has a voice in everything. We can hear him in everything. And uh, that has become our core value. If you've read our Cultivate books, um, you will find at the end of so many of our articles, we prompt you and we challenge you to uh, not just read the information, but to have an intimate encounter with God and journal His voice, to ask, ask Him a question, to dig a little deeper and journal His voice. And so we wanna take this whole video and unpack the value of journaling the Lord's voice, even walk through some of the, the barriers and the roadblocks that we've hit in engaging this tool and what it means to us. Um, from our very first summer camps that we hosted here 20 years ago, we've been teaching young people and now our students and our retreat guests how to journal the Lord's voice. And the value behind this is we don't want to just give you a drink of water. We want you to dig your own well and hear the voice of the Lord for yourself because that changes everything. And I think for us, the the most incredible part of journaling the Lord's voice is not that God can speak, which is an incredible thing. Uh, the psalmist says that he's not like the idols of the nations that have a mouth but can't speak. He's, he's a God that actually is alive and he's personal and he's intimate and he has a mouth that speaks. But what's even greater than the, his ability to speak is that he wants to speak to you. He has this deep longing to be known by you and for you to know him. He has a desire, and I believe he actually wants to speak to us even more than we want to hear it. Like he is longing to speak to us. And when you open up the book of Psalms, you find uh, that this is David's journal. And there's so many moments in the book of Psalms where David's pouring out his heart and suddenly God comes and he speaks back to David. And specifically in Psalm 139, you, you have this moment of David going on this journey of how intimately God knows him from his mother's womb and he knows every bit about him. And he comes to this moment in Psalm 139 where David says in verse 17 and 18, how precious to me are your thoughts, O Lord. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them all, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And you know, I think this is probably one of the most outrageous verses in the Bible where David says that God's mind is so full of us, the Father so obsessed with us, in his mind that he has more thoughts for us than all the grains of sand. Um, this is eight ounces of sand here. And in this eight ounces of sand, there's at least two million grains of sand. That's uh, a small number depending on how big the grains of sand are. Some, some grains can even go up to 15 million in one cup. So the father has more thoughts than all the grains of sand on all the seashores and all the places of the world. That's how much his mind is full of you and how much his heart longs to speak to you. He's a father who numbers the hairs on your head and he's engraved you on the palm of his hand. He wants to speak to you. So why do we write his voice down? Um, we write it down so we remember it. Um, I've had so many moments where I take some time in the morning, I write the Father's voice down, and a couple days later, I'll come back and I'll read what I've written. And in the moment when I was writing it, it didn't feel, uh, it wasn't like the clouds parted and the heavens opened and it was this audible voice. It was, it was by faith and it, was, it just felt like a very normal morning. And I'll come back days later and read it and go, oh my gosh, that, that almost felt like me writing that. That, but that wasn't me. Like That was the voice of God interrupting my day with his light and his truth and his affection and his goodness to me. And I've had so many moments that some of the darkest valleys that I've walked through, I've had nights even in this house where I can't sleep and depression and anxiety and all the stuff that, that hits us as humans. Um, and I've gone back to these journals, open them up, and I'll just sit and read back the voice of the Lord, read it out loud. 
And the same voice that spoke light in the darkness, when I open up these journals and begin to read his voice, that light penetrates the darkness of my circumstances and I'll close these journals and be a different person. So that's why we write them down for us and for the generations coming after us. I'm so grateful that David put these Psalms down. I found breakthrough over and over and over again by going into David's journals. So prayer. Prayer is not just us coming to God with our list of the things we want from him. Prayer is a conversation between a father and his children. And I love how Paul frames this in Galatians chapter 4 as the way he describes prayer. It's verse 5 and 7 and the Message Bible just articulates it in such a beautiful way. Let's look at that scripture. It says, We have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives crying out, Papa, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you're not a slave but a child? the privilege of intimate conversation with God. Every time I read that phrase, it provokes something so deep in my heart of what's available in our relationship with the Father. And I love when you read the Gospels and you see this intimate conversation between the heart of Jesus and the Father. Um, The disciples were so provoked by the way Jesus prayed, they came to him one day and said, teach us to pray. And the beginning of his teaching is our father. And if you miss the father piece, you miss everything. It begins in a relationship between a father and his children. And that's, that's what prayer is. And you see Jesus throughout his journey as a son um, being rooted in the authority of scripture, but then being crowned by the father's delight. And that's what I, I really believe journaling is. It's being crowned with the delight of heaven and then being rooted in what the scriptures are. And you see this throughout Jesus' ministry, specifically when he's baptized in the Jordan and he comes out of the water and the Father declares, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. I've probably written that phrase hundreds of times in my journals. Jonathan, you are my beloved Son. And it's those moments where he crowns me with his loving kindness. And as Jesus goes from being crowned with delight, he goes right into the wilderness where he's tempted by the enemy. Three different times he's tempted. And all three times he comes back with, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. It is written, worship the Lord God and serve him only. Those were all scriptures from the book of Deuteronomy. And Jesus modeled for us as sons and daughters of God uh, to live rooted in the scripture, but then to live crowned with the Father's delight. And that's what journaling is. Journaling doesn't take away from the authority of what the scripture is. It's engaging the voice of the Lord. And Jesus said it in that scripture. He said, I don't live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds. That's the fresh current word that's coming from the mouth of God. And that's what gives us life. Life came from a face-to-face encounter with God and dust in the garden. And it's in these pages that the face of God has come right up against my mess, up against my own humanity over and over again. And through a pen, his voice has met me. Journaling his voice is not easy. I have, even this week, I opened my journal and I knew I was gonna do this teaching and I went to do it and I felt those barriers. I felt that resistance. And I've discovered that in the kingdom, the places that we're created for greatness are the places we'll get hit with the most fear. And I literally hit a barrier this week in going to journal. And I actually got excited because I'm like, if I'm hitting this barrier, I know there's something beyond it that's more than I could ask or imagine. So what I want to do is break down five barriers for you guys that our staff has discovered over 20 years of teaching the spiritual practice, five barriers that we still hit and we've watched our students and our guests hit over and over again. So barrier one, that was just me thinking those things not God speaking. I've hit this barrier over and over and over again. But here's the truth. 
where does God live? God lives right here inside of me and he lives inside of you. And that is where God speaks from most of the time. He speaks through our thoughts and he speaks inside of us. You can even see this in the Old Testament through dreams, through visions. God was speaking inside. And now in the New Testament, in this new covenant in 1 Corinthians, it says that we have the mind of Christ. And that's how God speaks to us. I would love to hear the audible voice of God. I'm sure it would scare me to death and make me more alive than I've ever been. I hope to hear it someday. But where I've heard the voice of the Lord over and over again is inside of here, him speaking through my thoughts. And I've had so many moments that I'm journaling and I can, it's like I'm hearing the voice of the Lord and I'm also hearing this other voice going, that's just you, that's just you. But I've learned to just keep walking on those waters of faith, just like Peter stepped out of the boat. And I just keep writing and keep writing. And it's like many times for me, it starts as a little trickle of rain falling down. I'm like, I think this is what the Lord's saying. And all of a sudden it's like, a few drops of rain start coming out of my pen and then a flood of his love, a flood of his affection and his revelation begins to come out of my pen. And I'll finish, close my journal, come back days later and read it and go, that, that was not me, that was God thinking inside of me. I could have never come up with that. So that's the first barrier that we've seen that many of us hit over and over again. Barrier two, writing God's voice down is dangerous because it diminishes the authority of the Bible. It's too risky, we have the Bible, let's stay safe. This is not what Jesus taught us and this is not the way Jesus lived. Jesus heard the voice of the Father and he lived in this beautiful, intimate conversation with God. And Jesus said that we would know the Father like he did, that we are sheep that hear the voice of the shepherd. And what God has spoken to me over and over again in these journals doesn't contradict the authority of these scriptures. It actually confirms them and it's caused me to fall more in love with the scripture and know the word more than I've ever known it. In fact, I've had so many times that I'll read the scripture and as I'm reading that, I get a revelation and I'll pick up my pen and God will start speaking to me something so personal based on what I'm reading from the scripture. So I do want to confirm that God has authority in these scriptures. He doesn't contradict with his voice what's in here. Now, as Bill Johnson said, he will contradict our understanding of scripture because he will stretch us and he will take us to deeper waters. Barrier three, this is just wishful thinking. This is too good to be true. The truth is, that God is better than we could ask or imagine. Ephesians 3.20 says that God is able to do abundantly above beyond what we could ask or imagine. I've had so many times I'm writing in my journal, I'm like, this just feels too good to be true. And I'll just feel the Holy Spirit like leaping up and down saying, it is too good because it's me and that's what I do. I do beyond what you could ask or imagine. So this whole journaling thing, it takes faith. And it's about believing and stepping out of the boat and writing his voice and trusting him. Barrier four, I should hear perfectly the first time. The truth is journaling the Lord's voice is something we practice and we do by faith. I've been married now for 20 years and I'm still practicing learning how to hear what my wife is saying. And she's still practicing learning to hear what I'm saying. That's what a relationship is all about. And when I pick up my pen and journal the Lord's voice, I'm practicing learning to hear his voice. There's some days that I pick up my pen and it's just like a torrent of revelations just coming out. It's just so easy. I have other days that it just starts as like a small little raindrop. I'm like, I don't know if God's speaking today. And I take that first step and then one raindrop becomes another and another till a whole flood of his affection and his love is pouring down on me. I'm still practicing, I'm still growing and learning to hear the voice of the Lord. That pressure to do it perfectly the first time is not from the Lord. This isn't a performance, this is the Father you're dealing with and He wants a conversation with you. Barrier five, I'm afraid to hear God's voice. What if He punishes me? What if He condemns me? The truth is, Romans 8 says, there is now no condemnation for those in Jesus Christ. The psalmist said that God is slow to get angry and he's quick to love us. 
If you remember in Eden, when the fall happened and Adam and Eve are hiding behind these fig leaves of shame and fear, they hear the voice of God and they're afraid. And that's the, that's the human response so many times to the voice of the Lord when we're in fear and shame. But this is not what Jesus bought for us on the cross. Jesus bought for us on the cross a boldness to come to the throne of grace because we have a father of kindness who wants to speak to us. And we've been made righteous through Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid to hear his voice. He has so many thoughts for you, so much affection and love to pour on you. Even when he disciplines us, it's with love and it's with kindness. I have been corrected over and over again in this, but it's through so much kindness and through so much love, it saved my life again and again, hearing the voice of the Father. So I want to end this session by telling you guys a story. One of my favorite stories, a moment I had with my daughter that we put in our first volume of Cultivate. In fact, this is the first prompt that we ever published in our Cultivate series. And we're gonna close this session with this prompt and with this story. And you're gonna end doing this session by journaling the Lord's voice. And maybe this is your first time journaling the Lord's voice, or maybe you've done it hundreds of times. And I love that every time we come to his throne, he has another thought, he has another crown to put on our heads of the way he feels about us. So you can find this in volume one of Cultivate. And the story, it actually began at this table. It was a Saturday morning and Saturday mornings are so special in the Helser house. Um, and it's, our, uh, it's a day of rest and we began our day with breakfast around the table together. And my son Cadence was about five or six at this time and Haven's about three years old. And we're finishing up a beautiful pancake breakfast. And my wife looks at Haven and says, hey, would you like to go shopping today? I want to take you out and let you pick out any dress you want. And my little girl's eyes just lit up. Um, now, funny thing about girls and boys is that my daughter already had like twice the amount of clothes that my son had because I believe that moms live out their fashion dreams through their daughters. She had more shoes, more clothes. Her closet was full of stuff, but she had never got to go pick out her own little dress. And so they go off on a Saturday morning date to go shopping. And my bedroom is back here on the back corner of the house. And I was sitting in my bedroom reading when they come home and I, I hear them coming through the front door and Haven's room is above our room upstairs over here. And I hear her little feet run up the stairs and her room's right above ours. And as she gets in the room, it sounds like she's wrestling an alligator. Uh, and then I hear her run back down the steps and she runs through my front do my door of my bedroom and she runs and jumps in front of me. And she's wearing the dress that she went and picked out for herself. And as she stops, it was like time paused. And I realized in that moment, my little girl was saying, Daddy, define me with your thoughts. She was waiting on my voice to tell her who she was. And as she stood there in this beautiful, vulnerable, joyful state, she's like clay in the hands of a potter. Tell me who I am, Papa. And I looked at her and with everything inside of me, I said, Haven, you look more beautiful right now than you've looked in your whole life. It's like that dress was made for you. And this huge smile erupts on her face and she turns around and runs out of the room. She got what she came for. She came to be defined by her father's voice. So the next morning, I get up early, I'm making breakfast and Haven wakes up first in the house and I see her come down the steps and she's put her dress back on again. And she runs between me and the stove where I'm cooking and she does it again. And this time she kind of like puts her hands on her hips. She looks up at me and just pauses. And her little spirit is saying it again, daddy, tell me who I am. Daddy, tell me who I am. And I look at her and I'm like, Haven, you in that dress, you look amazing. Later that day, I'm out working in the yard and I see her little bare feet run through the yard and she gets between me and my work. She has her dress on. She stops and looks up at me again. She's like, do it again, daddy. Tell me who I am. Tell me who I am. Throughout that week, she put on the dress over and over and over again. And we had several other moments where she would stop and look at me and say, tell me who I am, father. That moment marked me as a father and it marked me as a son because I realized that 
is what we do when we open up our journal and we say, God, speak to me, I'm listening. That's the prayer that Samuel prayed. Oswald Chambers says when we pray that prayer, our life becomes a romance. When we open up the pages of our journal and we say, God, speak to me. You define me. Your thoughts define me. He does what I did for Haven. He looks into our eyes and he marks us with identity. If we don't hear this voice, we're gonna look for our identity in so many other things. But if we can learn this beautiful practice of coming to him and saying, Father, you define me with your voice, everything changes. So that leads us to this prompt. Um, we have created a PDF for you guys to download in the description below. It'll be a recap of this story between me and Haven. And it leads to this beautiful prompt. And I wanna encourage you guys that uh, everything we've done in this video was to lead you to this moment. This is all just information. We want to lead you into an encounter now, an intimate encounter where you and the Father have a conversation with one another. And so we've created this prompt and the prompt begins with a prayer. And uh, when you pause the video here in a minute, it might be you need to go find another place in your house. Maybe you're somewhere where it's noisy and you wanna wait till later in the day to re-engage this, but find a quiet place, sit down, find a journal, open it up to some blank pages. And we have a prompt to lead you. Just like Haven put on her dress and she came and stood before my chair, you're going to go and you're going to pray this prayer and you're going to stand before the throne of God's grace with confidence that he wants to speak to you even more than you want to hear it. He has thoughts for you that outnumber the grains of sand. And then you're going to pick up your pen and by faith, write what he says about you. So we're going to pause the video, download the prompt, read through it, pick up your journal and write. I bless you and I declare over you that you were created to hear the voice of God. He is a father full of affection, kindness, and love. May his thoughts define you, in Jesus' name. Well done, friends. You just journaled the voice of the Father, and His voice has the power to recreate your world. So before we close this session, I actually have one more prompt for you to do. What I want you to do is take the journal that you just wrote in, um, open it back up, and find uh, what He spoke to you. And what I want you to do is read that out loud over yourself. Um, it might feel a little silly, um, but this is powerful. I love what Paul says in uh, the scripture. He says, God uses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He uses the weak things to, to take down the strong. And I've had moments over and over again when I read what the Father spoke to me and I read it back over myself that I feel light penetrating the darkness. Again, the voice of the Lord said, let there be light. And that light went into the darkness. And so we're going to close this open your journal, and read out loud over your own heart what the Father has said to you. Bless you guys. May you do this over and over again and be changed by His unfailing love.